2008 Toyota 4Runner front brake pads and rotor replacement. I'm Brian Essick from How To Automotive and I'm going to walk you through that process. I'm going to start by getting the vehicle up in the air. If you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands and jack her up and go ahead and remove the front wheels. So after getting the wheels off, but I went ahead, I'm working on the uh, passenger side here, so I went ahead and turned the wheel to the left a little bit. So now that the caliper is kind of facing out at me, it's a little easier to work on. So right here on the ends, there's these little clips. And you need to take some needle those pliers and kind of pull them off. Like so. There's going to be one on the top and the bottom pin. Go ahead and remove those. Now on the bottom pin, there's just this little um, clip to help spread the pads apart. We need to get that off. So we're going to put it in between here and pop it out here. And here and pop it out. Now, you can, now you can, what you can do is you can take this pin here and slide it out. You may have to get something through the back side to kind of drive it through. Or you can get a pair of pliers or a needle nose and see if you can work it out. Once you remove the pin, then you can pull the finish pulling the clip out and set aside. Now what we need to do is uh, we need to lower the vehicle down, open the hood, and use the turkey baster or something like that and suck a little bit of brake fluid out of the master cylinder. And the reason why is we're going to push these four pistons back into the bore. First I want to make sure that you check the pistons, make sure that they're not leaking and um, the boots are looking like they're in good shape which these are on this vehicle so make sure yours are so what we're going to do is we're going to push these pistons back in but we're not going to open the bleeder screw at the top here we're going to leave it closed and what that's going to do is push the brake fluid back up the brake line and if the master cylinder is uh, uh, full it would spill out into the engine bay and create a mess and possibly damage the caps so after you get that done so after you get that done, you're going to take two pry bars like this and put it in between the brake pads and the rotors and squeeze them together. And what that does is it pushes the pistons back in for you. So you're going to do it until uh, the pistons are both flush against here and flush on the back side. Once, those are, once that's achieved, then you can go ahead and finish removing the top pin like so. And then slide out your... Uh, your old brake uh, brake pads and I like to keep them um, so this was the outer pad so I'm going to keep it separated and, uh, and take out my inner pad and keep it separated. The reason why is I'm going to match it up with the new ones. Uh, see how this one has a little uh, little clip on there to, uh, to squeals when it lets you know your brakes are, uh, are worn down. So we want to make sure we line the new ones back up with the, uh, the proper left inner and outer pads so I just sep I separate them and keep a note of which one goes to where. So after your pistons are pushed in and your pads are removed, go ahead and remove the 12 millimeter bolt here that holds the uh, brake hose on. After that's removed, on the back side of the calipers, you're going to remove the 17 millimeter bolt here and here. Don't remove these two on the, on the outer part of it, just the, the inner ones next to the... So you want to remove those two 17s. So after you get those two bolts out, the caliper will come off. And you don't want it to hang by the hose because what happens is it'll bend this metal line. So use a uh, bungee cord or a tie strap or something like this and kind of hang it, hook it through and hang it from the suspension. Now you can take your rotor and uh, remove the rotor. So now you can slip on your replacement rotors and if, they are, if they're coated in oil um, to keep them from rusting you know, and shipping stuff, go ahead and wash that off with soap and water or brake clean. And what I like to do is uh, put the rotor on and then put a lug nut on and run it in so it runs up so it holds it in place for me. So now that we got our rotor remounted, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little blue thread locker, Loctite, and we're going to put it on the bolts, the, the two 17s that we took off the back of the caliper, we took the caliper off. We're going to put a little bit of this thread locker on there and this is like a glue to help prevent the bolts from backing out. You can get this at your local parts stores. You can get them in a bottle a lot smaller or just just the amount of what you need. You don't need to buy the huge bottle like this. So after you get that, then you're gonna take the cap on it and go ahead and start your bolts on the back and tighten these up, both of these. And after you get those tightened up, then you're gonna put your bracket back into the, uh, the spindle here and start your 12 millimeter bolt here and tighten so now that. Now that the caliper's bolted up, our bracket's bolted back up. Now we need to focus our, our attention to the new brake pads 
So this is our old brake pad that went on the inside uh, of the pi piston. So we need to match up the one with the new, uh, that has the new squealer. So if you put it in the right, same position, the squealer is pointing the same way. So once you determine which, uh, which one's the inner pad, what we're gonna do now is take a little uh, seal glide grease or caliper grease, special grease made just for brakes. Molly grease is another brand of it. Um, we're gonna take a little bit of that and put it on the shims. Put it on the back of the shim like this, uh, just a thin layer, and this, prevent, this helps prevent squeaking and vibrations. So once you get that done, then you can take the inner pad and go, and go ahead and slide it into the caliper like so. And we'll do the same thing for the outer pad. We'll match it up. So the outer pad doesn't have the little metal squealer on it. So we're just going to put our, our lube on the back of this pad. Make sure you don't touch the inner side. If you get any grease or dirt on the, this side, it actually can actually cause squeaks. So you want to be careful not to get it um, fingerprints and oil and grease on it. Once you get the lube on it, then you can put, put it inside the caliper and slide it in. Now what you're going to do is take one of these pins and if it's all rusted up or corroded you either want to replace it or uh, use a wire brush or whatever and buff it up or you can put a little thin layer of uh, grease on it that's what i'm doing here it's a thin little layer on it and once you get that then you want to take with the with the mushroom in and put your pin through and you can reach around back to adjust your pad in and out like this to align it up And also I wanted to point out that uh, you want to also try to get the little hole where the clip went through kind of facing upwards. So once you get that done, then you can take your little clip that you took out and put it back through the pin. And if you forget this little clip, this pin will fall out and the brake pads could fall out of the car. So after you get that one done, then what you're going to do is go ahead and clean up and, and lube up the, uh, the second you're one. You're going to get it started like this. Then you're gonna take your clip that spreads and you wanna make sure that the, uh, the loops are pointing upwards. So the little ears right here are laying on top of the brake pad. So you want it to, to route through the, uh, this, the, uh, the pin here. So like that, and then you route it, slide it through. And then this side here, press it in, because it's kind of spring-loaded, and press it through. Now you want to slide your pin through, and like I said, you can adjust your in and out right here with your hands. So now you're going to slide it through like that. Once it's all the way through, you can go ahead and install your clip here. Now once you got that uh, set, now what you can do is you can put the little the little clips go into the holes on the inside of your uh, brake pads here. And uh, it may take a screwdriver and kind of push it in there and line it up. And then you also want to make sure that these ears are sitting on top of the pad like that. So you'll do both, both sides. So it'll sit like that. And the spring part will be kind of flaring out towards you. So once you got that achieved, now you're ready to... Uh, Take your lug nut back off and put your your wheel on and uh, you're going to duplicate the same thing and torque your wheel down and you're going to duplicate the same thing on the opposite side and then once you've done that you um, you'll lower the put the wheels back on lower the vehicle down and uh, you're going to do is uh, pump the brake pedal until the all the fluid is pumped back into the calipers and once that's achieved uh, you should have a nice firm brake pedal and you should not have to bleed the brakes. But if for any reason, after pumping the brake pedal seven or eight times and there's still spongy, uh, somehow you got air in the system and you'll have to bleed the bleeder screws here. You'll have to crack them and have somebody help you bleed the brakes. And that pretty much completes the front brake replacement pads and rotors on a 2008 Toyota 4Runner. I'm Brian Essen from How To Automotive and I'd like to thank you for watching my videos. And I encourage you to uh, subscribe for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again.